you guys are too. You guys are both amazing representatives for Minnesota. I'm so excited to have two title holders going this year for both Grand and Super National. That is, that's such an exciting opportunity for the state. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us. I'm Viet Nguyen, Win, by the way, this Grand Minnesota, and and I'm Annabelle Lorenz, Miss Super Minnesota. I love that. Oh, that's so exciting to finally meet my successor because I was Miss Grand Minnesota 2019. <laughs> and then of course we know because of the pandemic, there wasn't any kind of pageant last year at the national level. So now we're finally getting delegates to go. And it's so exciting to finally be able to meet you guys even virtually and just be here to answer any questions and to chat about whatever you have about h and Grand and Supra. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do want to ask about your experience and how it's changed your life overall. Oh, absolutely. So I'm the first person to say that competing for Miss Grand United States was the best experience of my life. Easily the best national pageant I have been to. H&I, they truly treat their title holders like royalty. You know, they give you so many opportunities to be able to mingle with the community in Chicago, but also they have such extravagant photo shoots. They have hair on site, makeup, and the production is next level. I would honestly could put Miss Grand United, United States right under Miss USA in terms of the level of production that they bring to nationals. They have a full television production crew. They have one of those things that I love. They have those little dolly systems where they have the camera people rolling so they can get every angle on stage. Every girl gets their chance to shine. You know, you get to do your introduction, get to introduce yourself as a representative for, I mean, our amazing great state of Minnesota, which is a just a phenomenal opportunity within itself, but they really pour all into their contestants. And even speaking with the directors about the pageant, they truly understand and recognize your pageant is only as good as the experience the title holders have. You know, we're the people that are able to talk about what nationals was like, how the directors are, how the contestants are. So they really realize, you know, you can't fake that kind of experience. You have to actually put your all in to make sure everyone has an incredible time. So for me, those 10 days in Chicago were honestly the highlight of that summer, but also just, it was such an incredible pageant. I loved being able to hear people while touring Chicago and say, Minnesota, we're from, you know, Minneapolis or from St. Paul. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, let's take photos. It's, it's just such an opportunity. It's very, it's a proud thing to be able to wear your state across your chest. But on top of it, H&I does such an incredible job of making sure that no matter what the outcome is of the pageant, no matter, you know, what you're doing throughout the week, you have an incredible time. You make connections that last a lifetime and you just have memories to carry with you. So I would, I'm very excited for you guys to be able to experience this. Yeah, I think we're both super excited too. I mean, I love Chicago. I feel like Chicago is one of our, it's like a sister city to Minneapolis mm -hmm. almost. Like everybody Absolutely. in the Midwest, it's just like, that central hub. So I'm really excited to be in that environment again and just meet all the new people, friendly faces. Oh, absolutely. You guys are gonna love Chicago. Like you said, being from Minnesota and Minneapolis, it's like they're sister cities. So going there, you definitely got a little bit more of the Midwest recognition, which is really fun. You know, you're not that, not the home state, but like you're you're basically the little home state on the team. So that's also a great opportunity. People do recognize you as Minnesota, and it's just it's a very proud feeling to have that you are the representative chosen to be there for your state. So that's going to be an amazing opportunity for the both of you. I'm really excited for you guys to experience this. As in about like her year, like how was her competition? Yeah, could you just kind of take us through like what your competition was like from registration to that last night that you were on stage? Yeah, absolutely. So when I got to Chicago, they brought us over to the host hotel. I was fortunate enough to be flying over with Miss Grand Delaware. We coordinated our plane trip. So I had a little travel buddy with me, but they made sure that we were safe and secure, shuttled over to the hotel, and all the contestants were in the lobby, and it was our first chance actually meeting each other, so we're all just kind of like, oh, I recognize you from social media, oh, we've chatted before, and it's just kind of like this, this big reunion between people, and it's like, we've never met, but it's kind of like we're getting together again, like long-lost friends and sisters, so registration amazing smooth process they had the time hair care team there to you know spruce us up make us look great as soon as you get there you do a photo shoot which is incredible they really want to make sure that they capture as many moments as possible one thing I love about H&I is they're very forward with promoting their title holders. You know, they're proud to have you representing their systems. So there are many photo shoots, they did video interviews, very seamless, nice process. We got gorgeous little opening number dresses and shoes, and then we're able to go to our room, relax. Not for too long though, because I will say 
grand especially also super though they're known for their open numbers so you will be doing a lot of rehearsals but it's so worth it because the dance that they had us do was by far like the most intricate but also the most fun that i've done on stage you know they make sure everyone's able to showcase their fun personalities so rehearsals do go a bit long but i think it's very much worth it for the production in the end because they do live stream these all across facebook and as it's the preliminary for an international pageant a lot of people are tuning in to watch so they want to make it you know entertaining and fun so they did have a lot of rehearsals but like I said, they treat us like royalty. So even throughout the week we went on tours, we got to see the Bean in Chicago. We got to go to this gorgeous fountain and do photo shoots at every stop. So they had traveling photographers. I know Aaron King will be there this year. He's an incredible photographer. He was there shooting us throughout the week I was there. And uh, my year at least, there had a Miss Photogenic Award, which I was fortunate enough to take home. I was very happy about that. But yeah, so they do photo shoots throughout the week and they're kind of, they're not judging you, but they're trying to see, you know, who's able to, you know, act comfortable in front of the camera. How do your photos turn out? So that's one thing I loved. Personally, I love, I think modeling is so fun. So being able to have that many photo shoots was just an amazing opportunity for a pageant. Normally there are optional competitions you might have to pay for, but this pageant was, no, we want your swimsuit photos. We want your gown photos. We want photos of you and your opening number. We want all of these to be able to promote you afterwards. So the week was filled with different tours, visiting restaurants, fun photo shoots, and just having little bonding activities. So we were able to go for little empanadas and mocktails at um, this <laughs> restaurant. That was, yeah, they were delicious. There were these little spritzy fruit drinks. So we were able to have those at a restaurant, just really spend time with our, you know, our sister queens. And of course they had Miss Grand United States there, Paola from 2018 there to answer questions and to mingle with us, to be able to just clarify. They want you to feel comfortable and for you to feel your best. So I think I, what I loved most was that the week leading up it was a good balance of rehearsal, but also getting to try new foods, exploring Chicago, bonding with your sister queen. So that way, when you actually go on stage, you're feeling refreshed and charged up. So one thing that I loved was they had hair and makeup teams there. So we just walked into prelims. We got to sit down, get glammed up, get ready. And they really made it a very seamless process. They wanted to make sure there's not, you know, added stress on the contestant saying, okay, when do I have to line up? Is my hair perfect? Is my, you know, makeup ready? Yes, everything is taken care of by the production, by the teams that they have there, because they just want you to be able to go on stage, feel confident, show off your gown, show off the hard work you put into swimsuit. So for me, from point A to point B, I mean, another thing that I love about Grand that I think you cannot find on most pageants is they had to stay the night after finals. You know, most pageants are really quick to kind of wrap it up, but they said, you know, we, we understand you need time to relax and you go home the next day. So for me, it was lovely because my year was Miss New Mexico's birthday. So we all went out afterwards for a little bit of cake, being able to celebrate, you know, birthday and pageants. It was just truly a an event that was meant to celebrate you as a person, you as a title holder, but also the system. So for me, it was just one of the most organized, planned out weeks. And it was such a good balance of leisure and exploration, but also rehearsals and making sure that you were very well prepared to represent your state on the national stage. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm happy to hear that h and Productions is very supportive and mm -hmm. provide that environment for you guys. And I'm looking forward to that. So uh, is there any advice that you'd give to us? <laughs> Something you wish you could do? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So my big thing of advice is making sure just you feel confident and sure in yourself. The biggest thing that I felt with pageantry, sometimes you get those little doubts, especially backstage at the end where you've never seen anyone's gown, you've never seen them in their swimsuit yet. So you might see someone you're like, oh, that gown is absolutely gorgeous. You know that this gown blows mine away, but it's you chose your gown for a reason. You know, you feel confident, you feel beautiful and there's a story behind it. So my big thing is not letting those little kind of last minute doubts get to you when you're backstage because it does become kind of hustle and bustle and I think you can either get into that competition mode really focus on yourself or you can get distracted so the thing that I recommend is really trying to focus on yourself and remembering why did I pick this gown you know why do I feel good in this swimsuit why am I the most prepared to go on stage because of who I am not necessarily compared to other people Another thing that I love during pageants is being kind of like a backstage mom. So a lot of people tend to get a little competitive, but my thing is like, okay, if you need help zipping up your dress, let me zip you up. I backstage in the United States, I was gluing somebody into the top of their dress before we went on for evening gown. You know, I think that can also help you a lot. You know, de-stress is like, you know, let me not treat it as a competition. Like you, before you go on the national stage, you are as prepared as you will ever be. There's nothing you can do in that five minutes that will really, you know, 
it's set you over the edge. You know, you're, you're there, you're prepared, you're ready. So making sure that you're in like a nice mindset, I feel like is the most important thing. And whether that can be helping people backstage. So you feel, you know, happy and cheerful or focusing on yourself and just saying, let me block things out. However, it might be for you, it depends on the person, but just really making sure that, you know, you're fully aware that you're there for a reason. You've done all that you can to prepare and you just really need to enjoy your time on a national stage representing your state because it doesn't it doesn't get any more special than that. So just really appreciating that moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's great advice because I feel like you can kind of get caught up in the idea that it is it is a competition and there are high stress levels, but just taking a second to just really enjoy where you are, what you're doing and realizing that the work is done and now just <laughs> take it in and take it for what it's worth. Absolutely. My biggest thing is to be present. So one little, you know, funny story was right after nationals, about two weeks afterwards, I lost my phone. And unfortunately during nationals, I ran out of iCloud space. So all the pictures I took, all the videos were gone. You know, there was no way I can get them back. And it, I was upset for a few days, but then I remember, you know, I still have the memories. I still have photos. I took my sister Queens. I got those from them, but you know, I, I made me realize we could theoretically you lose any electronic at any time. The pictures don't matter because they might not exist. You know, what matters is the memories that you have, you know, being fully present, not letting little things get to you because, you know, I have, as someone who's competed in pageants for many years, I've also met people that let little things get to them and it'll let them bring, bring them down during pageant week. And I think if you're just able to be very happy, very present, really excited and proud of yourself, no matter what the outcome is, no matter how many pictures you take, no matter what happens, you're still going to have those amazing memories that or aren't going to be tainted by any, you know, I woke up a little late or I didn't win this prelim award. You know, you're going to have just really good, solid memories that just make you proud and happy of that week that you're in Chicago. So, you know, I think if you just make the most out of those moments, it also translates onto the, onto the stage because you're there for a long time before you get on the stage. You're there for five long days of rehearsals and traveling. And, you know, the judges might be able to tell if they're a little bit worn down or tired. So just really focusing on making sure that you stay prepared, that you stay energized, that you're just really bringing the best self that you've created all this time preparing to that national stage. So not letting anything get to you during pageant week, I think is the biggest thing, especially for a major national pageant like this, where you're there for such a long time before competing. Do you guys want to share with her that this is your both of you, your first pageant? Yeah. Yeah. So actually, it's it's our both of us. It's our first pageant. That is so exciting. I'm so happy for you guys. Honestly, you could have fooled me. You guys look like seasoned pageant competitors. <laughs> no, this is so exciting. And I think that's something about Grand is they do like freshness. You know, they want somebody that is, you know, new, able to represent, of course, at that high competitive level. But you know, I've even notice in pageantry, sometimes the people that compete over and over again and maybe get top five consistently, they might not stop doing well at some point because things can go from, you know, relatable to rehearsed, you know, which is a, is a fine line in pageantry. But it's also incredible, as I think it was mentioned to me that you guys are at rehearsal right now. So being able to, since it's your first pageant, being able to prepare with the team is really going to set you guys over the edge, no matter what your experience level is, the team truly does make a difference. So that's, I'm so excited for you guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. So I heard you're in the pageant industry still so with Pageant Planet. Yeah, so I work for Pageant Planet now. I, I'm there. I work in marketing. So all their digital marketing, I run Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, those kinds of things. I also work on the back end of the website. So creating contestant profiles, filling up their database. I've been working with them for almost four years now. It'll be four years in September. So it's been quite some time with the company, but it was always a silent dream of mine as a little teenage competitor saying, you know, I would love to work for Pageant Planet one day. And fortunately enough, I was able to have the opportunity while I was in college to write their hit or miss articles. And it developed, you know, through hard work, determination, staying with the company, pursuing what I wanted, being able to now work in marketing for them. So it's been, it's been an incredible opportunity. I think Pageant Planet really is changing and shaping the pageant industry into just, it's such a positive space. You know, our goal is to really connect and expand, you know, so making sure especially for new competitors like you we have tons of resources you know we have this one article is literally 101 tips for first-time contestants and th that's something i wish i had the first time i competed you know i think there's also a charm to competing you know without any guidance but it can really when you're at a, a national competition you really want that edge you know it's it's cute to show up a, you know somewhat unprepared but when you're representing a state a national level you really want to have that 
preparedness behind you. So it's great you guys have a team, but also that's what Pageant Planet, Stephen Roddy created it for, was to be able to help new contestants kind of navigate their way into the industry. So even though I don't compete all the time, you know, I haven't competed since Miss Minnesota USA back in 2000, it was the 2020 pageant, but it was in 2019 because of the scheduling, but because of COVID, as you know, there haven't been that many pageants. So I've just been blessed to be able to still work in the industry, be able to follow title holders and things like that without necessarily having to actively compete all the time, you know, especially during a time where there just aren't that many opportunities to do so. As someone who's seen both ends of the spectrum, so you've been on stage and you've also been backstage in a sense, what would you say is something from your current work, other than the 101 tips, what's something that you wish you would have known in your pageant, like when you were competing that you know now? I think the biggest thing, it might have not necessarily been when I was at Miss Grand United States, but definitely earlier on is not trying to copy other people and kind of emulate them. I think the biggest thing in the beginning, I would see the successful title holders and say, okay, they wore this color, I should try wearing that color. They did their hair this way, I should try doing that. But the thing is, when something works for somebody, it's because it works for them. It highlights their uniqueness, their individuality, it complements them as a person. And that doesn't mean it'll necessarily work for you. And I've fallen into that trap many times of saying, okay, this is trending. Maybe it's not the best thing for me, but it's trendy, so people are going to like it. But no, it depends on how you're able to, you know, wear something, if it flatters you, if it highlights your personality. So one of the biggest things that I learned is trying not to emulate other people. And that's something that, that's the whole reason why Pageant Planet has so many tips is because they're saying, here's how you can learn to be your best self. You know, the tips aren't saying, okay, if you have blonde hair, blue eyes, wear this. No, it's, you know, saying, here's how you can determine what best complements your unique skin color, your eye color, your hair color. It's all about individualizing pageant prep. And that's something it took me a long time to realize. I just said, let me look at these successful title holders. What did they do? Let me do that. And it's all about, you know, learning from other people. Yes. Working with a coach, of course, but it's finding out the personalized way to make you successful. You know, things, of course, you can take little things here and there. Okay. This general, this evening gown looks great on her, but you know, if it also flatters you, you know, sure go for that cut or that color, but you know, it shouldn't be so copy paste or I need to do X, Y, Z to win. You might need to do like a, Z, Y, like some crazy kind of combination because you're this unique person and you learn a different way. You work out a different way. You know, everybody is so unique and special. I feel like you only learn that through like years and years of competing and even being backstage and hearing other people's stories is in order to be very successful, you know, especially following all these major title holders, being able to interview some of them for our podcast on Pageant Planet, really learning that people are successful when they're successful for themselves you know, taking what makes you unique and kind of positioning that to make you your best self. And it can be hard. It can, you know, it can be very kind of enticing to see, you know, like a lot of people, Katrina Gray's Lava Walk. I've seen a lot of people on international stages wearing the same cut gown and, you know, doing her poses. And of course it's iconic and people are like, wow, but that's not, it's not you, you know, and really the judges are there because, and they're trying to pick the woman that impresses them the most. And you can only do that by being yourself and the best version of yourself. Yeah, that's something we were kind of talking about actually before this. We both have been feeling like we have this sense of imposter syndrome, but mm-hmm. as we've kind of been working and learning and growing, we're just like, you know, we actually are impressive, confident, beautiful women. So we just mm-hmm. need to own it and be who we are. And that's the way we're going to win this competition. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That is the way that you win, that you succeed is by saying, I am Miss Supranational USA. I am Miss Grand United States. And why? You know, why should they pick you? You know, I have these talents, these skills, like, of course, gorgeous and successful. But why in the individual reasons, why would you be the best at a holder? Because once you believe that, you're able to convince the judges of that. Because if you don't believe it, the judges aren't going to believe it for a second. You know, and you're competing also with so many women that are also very qualified of representing the USA at an international pageant. So the whole point is really thoroughly understanding why you deserve it. And the judges will be able to kind of feel that, okay, like this woman truly believes and understands what it takes to be a national title holder. She can see herself in that role. And that really is what sets you apart from the other contestants. After, like, what what tip did she give you going to preliminaries because it will be your first time and then what tip did she give you going into the final round 
So what tips would you give us going into the preliminaries? And what would you, what advice would you give us going into the final show? Because so, this will be our first time being on stage for something like this. Yes. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing for me is even before you're on stage, getting into that stage mindset. So a lot of things that I've learned through pageants is the judges can sometimes see you in the wings. So if you're back there and you're like, you know, nervous and you're breathing, judges can kind of, they, could, they might be able to see that. And even if they don't see it, they might be able to feel that shift. So whenever you're backstage, just being like, I'm confident, I'm ready, standing in your pose, you know, feeling good, throwing your shoulders back, you know, getting ready. You're already competing before you're on the stage. And as soon as you step out there, you need that energy. You want to captivate them. I don't know. There's the stage like routines can change every year, but I know that last year they had us come out on stage while the girl was finishing her routine. So another contestant is being judged while you're starting to enter the stage. And, you know, you never want to steal someone's spotlight, but you do want to steal their spotlight in this instance. <laughs> you want to walk on stage and the judge is like, whoa, okay, I'm judging her, but this other girl just walked out. Like, I'm already looking at her. So being fully present, looking at all the judges, giving them their individual moment, because you want to connect with them. Because remember, there's so many of them. That's the biggest thing about pageantry is you could have five out of the six judges eating out of your hand. But if one of them doesn't like you, that could knock you down. So you really want to have the moment to connect with each judge being present on stage. You know, my, the little tip I have is have a string that pulls you from the top of your head. You want to feel as tall, like the tallest person in the room. And you also want to look long and lean on stage, you know, just being up, being present, really connecting with the judges, you know, have, you know, feeling I'm the kind of person I go kind of blank when I'm on stage. Like I can't hear the music every day. I'm just focusing on what I'm doing, my routine, looking at the judges but you know really trying to feel you know the beat of the music it's your moment you know this is your time to shine because if you don't make it into the the finals you know at the top 15 you won't be able to compete again so this is your chance to really show off the hard work you put into swimsuit and to evening gown but also you want to go you want to go hard because this is what gets you through the next cut you know you of course you want to save something for finals but you really want to give preliminary your all because this is when the judges are making their decision and during finals, I think the other thing is at that point when you're competing again, like you've already made it to like the top 15. So you're going to have that adrenaline. You're going to have that confidence. And you just really want to show the judges, hey, I'm even better than I was the first time. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling incredible. You want to keep showing them. You pick me once, pick me again, and then pick me again and pick me again. So the big thing is, yeah, it's consistency. You know, when you're on stage, even the little moments of when you're being called, let's say, into the top 15, you want to be you know, grateful. You want to say thank you to the judges. You don't want to be like, oh, you know, I knew that was going to happen. No, you want to, you know, show a little bit of humility and show I'm a person. That's the biggest thing also is the judges want to connect with you. You don't want to seem like some kind of untouchable beauty queen on stage. Of course you are. You know, you're a title holder. You're very impressive. But you also want to be relatable. You know, so you want to have that kind of personal moments of when you're doing opening number, even connecting with the judges, looking at them, having a little bit of personality. Interviews are first. So you, you win the judges in the interview room. They're going to kind of know your personality and they want to see that matchup on stage. You know, if you're in the interview room and you're fun, you're cracking jokes and then on stage, you're very serious. Like, well, which one's real? Is she serious or is she funny? You know, but then you're on stage and you're kind of you're smiling at them. You're being a little, you know, just a little funny, you know, giving a little personality in your dance. And they say, wow, okay, she's fun. She's relatable. I connected with her. She's entertaining. You know, anywhere we send her Miss Grand United States or Miss Supranational USA, people are going to like her. People are going to have fun when she's around. You know, there's many layers to being a title holder. It's being impressive on stage, yes, but it's also being relatable. It's having a good personality. So the judges are looking for all of those things during the entire pageant, especially during interview and during prelims. So prelims are definitely the time I would say, give it your apps, always give it your absolute all, but prelims are when you really want to showcase, okay, I need to make it past the first cut because once you make it, the cut during finals, you'll kind of have more of the adrenaline and confidence kind of push you through it but during prelims it's the more nerve-wracking point so you really want to feel confident and ready to go on that stage awesome well i think we are about to get back to work and keep focusing on rehearsing our final touches so do you have any final well wishes for us before we head off 
Of course, I just want to wish you guys both the best of luck competing. I'll be watching online. I'm very excited for the both of you. I think you'll have a phenomenal time and do an incredible job representing Minnesota. I'm, I'm honest, I can't express how excited I am for you guys. Miss Grand United States, Miss Supranational USA, as I mentioned, they are an incredible organization. H and I do a wonderful job producing a pageant and supporting their contestants. So I think you guys are going to do an amazing job, but also just have an incredible experience. Yeah. Well, thank you for all your advice. I really appreciate it. Of course, and good luck rehearsing. Get a little bit used to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>